Okay, so in this video, we're going to go through and explain the role of all of the key organelles involved in protein synthesis and transport. So actually manufacturing the protein and then moving it through the cell and possibly moving it all the way to the cell surface membrane so that the protein can be released from the cell. So let's start by having a look at the organelles that we're going to talk about. So all of the organelles here play a role in protein synthesis and transport. So we've got the nucleus, number one. We've got the rough endoplasmic reticulum or the ribosomes which are free in the cytoplasm as number two. Now I've kind of grouped these two together because obviously the rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes attached to its surface and there are ribosomes in the cytoplasm. Both these types of ribosomes are involved in synthesizing proteins. Uh, we're gonna talk about vesicles as well. Now we've got vesicles that transport proteins from the rough ER to the Golgi body, but we've also got vesicles that bud off from the Golgi body and transport the protein to the cell surface membrane. So I'll number those vesicles as three. And then we can talk about the Golgi apparatus because it plays a role in modifying proteins. And we're also actually going to talk about the cytoskeleton, which are the protein filaments that run through the cytoplasm because the cytoskeleton is involved in the movement of those vesicles, for example, from the Golgi body to the cell surface membrane. And eventually we're going to get to the point where the protein is released from the cell through the cell surface membrane. Okay, so let's go through and look at the individual role of each of these organelles. So let's start off with the nucleus. What do we know about the nucleus? Well, the nucleus contains DNA. Now you might be thinking, well, what's that got to do with protein synthesis? Well, the answer is a lot because DNA contains bases and the order of bases determines the order of amino acids in the protein. So what we can say is that DNA codes for protein, or even more specifically, the order of bases in DNA determines the order of amino acids in a protein. Or as an alternative to that, we could say the order of bases in DNA determines the primary structure of a protein because the primary structure of a protein is just the order of amino acids, obviously held together by peptide bonds. So that's where the nucleus is important. And later on in year 12, you'll learn exactly how that works in the process of transcription, whereby the order of bases in DNA determines the order of bases in messenger RNA, which then goes to the ribosomes where the genetic code can actually be used to put those amino acids together in the correct order. Now we've got the code for the amino acids, let's talk about the ribosomes and the rough ER and their role in protein synthesis, which is a big one. The ribosomes themselves are the site of protein synthesis. And again, you'll learn about this in lots more detail later in year 12 when you do translation. You'll learn exactly how those amino acids get brought to the ribosomes using the transfer RNAs and how they get joined together in those condensation reactions with peptide bonds to make the polypeptide. But for now, we're just looking at the organelles involved. So we're going to say the ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis. The rough ER, I've put on the same slide because the rough ER has ribosomes attached to its surface. So again, we're going to say its role is protein synthesis because proteins can be made on those ribosomes as well as the ribosomes that are free in the cytoplasm. The rough ER also transports proteins to the Golgi body. And we can see this on the diagram. So once the protein is produced by the ribosomes on the rough ER, it's gonna be transported through the rough ER packaged into a vesicle and carried to the Golgi body or the Golgi apparatus. So for the rough ER, we can say synthesis of proteins and transport of proteins. 
once we get to the Golgi body, what are we going to say about the Golgi body? Now, the Golgi body, it receives the proteins from the rough ER and the Golgi body modifies the proteins. For example, we can say it makes glycoproteins. Now, a glycoprotein is a protein with a carbohydrate chain attached. So that would be one example of how it's modified a protein. So it modifies the proteins. For example, it makes glycoproteins. It uh, packages the proteins into vesicles. And then we can come onto those vesicles here. Now, these vesicles, once the Golgi body has modified the protein, packaged it into a vesicle, the vesicle will bud off from the Golgi body. And we can call it a secretory vesicle because these vesicles are going to carry the protein to the cell surface membrane where it can leave the cell. So for the vesicles, we can say they transport the proteins to the cell surface membrane. which again, we can see happening on the diagram here. And the vesicles fuse with the cell surface membrane and release the protein on the other side of the membrane via a process called exocytosis, which we see a few times in biology. It's basically the idea where a vesicle, which is carrying something, fuses with the cell membrane and releases its contents outside of the cell or on the other side of the cell surface membrane. So we've been all the way through. We've gone from the nucleus, which has the DNA, which is the code for the protein. The ribosomes and the rough ER actually synthesize the proteins. The Golgi body can then modify the protein and package the protein into a vesicle. And the vesicle can transport that protein to the cell surface membrane. I think we should also just mention, which wasn't on this diagram, the mitochondria. Now, we should talk about the mitochondria and the role of the mitochondria in protein synthesis. Obviously, the job of the mitochondria is aerobic respiration. So let's just put that down as a little reminder. But aerobic respiration makes ATP, or we can say it releases energy, which is needed for protein synthesis. Because protein synthesis is about joining amino acids together in condensation reactions and making peptide bonds. Anytime we make a bond like that and synthesize a molecule like that, it does require energy. So cells that make a lot of proteins are going to have not only a lot of ribosomes and rough ER, but a lot of mitochondria to produce more ATP. So there's more energy available for protein synthesis. Now, we're going to see a summary of all of this in a second. But before we do, let's just also mention the cytoskeleton, which you do more about if you study OCR, less about if you do AQA. But the cytoskeleton is used to move the vesicles through the cytoplasm. So, for example, when the rough ER packages proteins into vesicles, they are moved to the Golgi body using the cytoskeleton. And when the Golgi body packages proteins into vesicles, again, they're moved by the cytoskeleton to the cell surface membrane. And remember, the cytoskeleton is just a network of protein fibers that run through the cytoplasm. And one of its role is the movement of vesicles. It's also there to support the organelles and keep them in place. It's also used in cell division and the movement of chromosomes in cell division. But here we can talk about the cytoskeleton in terms of moving those vesicles that contain these proteins. Let's have a look at it all together. So you might get an exam question for four or five marks asking you to outline the role of organelles in protein synthesis and the transport of proteins. Now, that question does not want an answer with detail of transcription and translation. It just wants you to outline the role of all of the organelles that we've just been through. And this would be an example of a model answer. So the nucleus, as we said, contains DNA, which codes for proteins. Ribosomes synthesize proteins, and you could say the rough ER 
also synthesizes proteins. The rough ER, as well as synthesizing proteins, you can say it processes or packages proteins into vesicles because they will then go to the Golgi body. The Golgi body can modify the proteins, e.g. form glycoproteins. The proteins then enter secretory vesicles for transport. The vesicles may move to the cell membrane where the proteins leave the cell by exocytosis. And finally, the vesicles are moved through the cytoplasm using the cytoskeleton. The other one that was given credit is the mitochondria releasing energy or making ATP for protein synthesis. So this is another one of those biology stories where you can easily bag yourself four, five, maybe even six marks, as long as you can name the organelles and describe their role accurately in protein synthesis and protein transport.